On today's episode, we put the 1988 Tim Burton classic Beetlejuice to the ultimate test, the nostalgia test. And remember, I'll eat anything you want me to eat. I'll swallow anything you want me to swallow. So come on down. I'll chew on a dog. Welcome to the Nostalgia Test Podcast, the show where two longtime friends put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the Nostalgia Test. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yep! Everybody. It's showtime! Showtime! Welcome, everyone, to the Nostalgia Test Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Dissinger, you're here in LA, and here are my longtime friend and co host, Manny. Huelo on Long Island. That's right, everybody, on Long Island. If you're from Long Island, you're on Long Island. You're not in Long Island. Manny, how you doing? What is up, Dan? <laughs> we took a break from the 90s. We're going 1988, huh? 1988. Right. We have to. All right. All right. First thoughts on this. Did on you the, like this movie? Beetlejuice. 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 Okay. <laughs> Did you like it back in the okay. day? Let me just say that this movie is one of those movies that my mom was like, oh, I have to show you this movie. It's Beetlejuice. She loved Beetlejuice. My mom loves Beetlejuice. And so when I was a kid, I saw Beetlejuice. Why? Because it was rated PG. Should it have been? No, probably not. So you were uh, allowed to say fuck one time? I guess you could a PG say, movie. I guess you could say fuck one time on a PG film. In 1988. Yes. I guess so. Okay. But I love Beetlejuice. That movie when I was a kid, I loved it. And truthfully, I love the cartoon. The Beetlejuice the cartoon, cartoon was great. Which is weird, though, because they make it look like Beetlejuice and Lydia are like boyfriend and girlfriend. Something. Which, they're like best creepy. friends, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That yeah, was a weird ca cartoon. Yeah, you didn't hate Beetlejuice. No. Like in this movie, you're like, he's, he's kind of like not supposed to be liked no and he's only on screen uh for 17 minutes and it's literally that the movie's about him i mean it's, it's like fucking drop free. dead fred in this like he oh, reminded me like that kind of thing was he just imaginary was he an imaginary friend beetlejuice no he beetlejuice was a <laughs> i love drop dead fred we have to do that movie drop dead fred listen oh, this yeah. movie well, first of all tim burton always kills it with the scenery Right. Yes. First of all, he loves suburbia. He yeah. loves to make fun of suburbia. It's just like, I don't even know about making fun, but he loves to like display what suburbia is like. Or even this was like even country yeah. suburbia. Connecticut. Like, yeah. Oh, Vermont. It was in Vermont. in Vermont. It was filmed in Vermont. Yeah. But it's supposed to be Connecticut. Yeah. I don't remember. I were so I remember a lot of the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't I didn't remember how slow. <laughs> The beginning was <laughs> okay. <laughs> the beginning and like is the how awkward. Part. Those they're so weird. Like they don't want. Are they doing a staycation? Is that what that is? Yes. They're not going away. It's they're the staying home. It's the first they, staycation. Like, they don't even want to be outside. They're like, oh god, no. we got to go in town. No, like, no. They, they can't wait to get back inside. They can't wait to get back inside. Do you think they just wanted to have a baby? Is that what they were trying to do? Because like she did say, like they, they wish yeah. they had kids. And they they couldn't, so, or they. It's weird. There's a lot of lines that were just thrown away. Yeah, um, but is that yeah. why they couldn't wait to get back home? No, he wanted to get home to play with the model. Yes, he loved the model. And we're talking about a model of the town, not some model they had tied up in the attic. Yes. <laughs> no, it was just he wanted to play. I don't. Alec play Baldwin is so young in this. Gina Davis is fantastic. I mean, it's dude, fantastic. there's so many great actors in here. Yeah, um, the, let's name them. Let's name them. <laughs> Go ahead. Name Alec them. Baldwin, Gina Davis, Jeffrey Jones, which, you know, we keep, he's had he, some he, issues. He re, he he was the principal. He he played some good roles, man. He wasn't even in. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was in Howard the Duck. Dude, he was in Howard the Duck. We're never doing that movie. No, ever. you know, it's on. It's on Peacock right now. I wanted to watch it. The preview. You're like, what the fuck is this movie? What is yeah. this movie? Yeah, but he Watch was also, 
arrested in 2002 for uh, possession of child child porn. So all right, cool. Winona Ryder, <laughs> moving right along. You know, Michael Keaton. All I think you said it already, but Michael Keaton. Yeah. What do you think about Michael Keaton? Wait, can I just say there's one other person in this movie that now sure. that I'm older, I was like, holy shit, Dick Cavett from the Dick Cavett show. He no. was the agent, Catherine O'Hara's agent that said, you're a flake. You've always been a flake. Like that guy that was at the first dinner with the shrimp in the face. Yes. That's Dick Cavett. Oh, yes, it is. Holy shit. Unreal. Dude. <sighs> There's so many iconic scenes in this. So many. But I didn't realize how fast the movie was. 92 minutes right up your alley, oh, Manny. Yes, dude. Only two minutes longer than what I'm asking for. This is great. <laughs> 92 minutes. <laughs> 92 minutes, dude. Got to the point. Yeah. Even though the beginning was slow, it was just no. like after the beginning. Yeah. It just fucking do, 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 rolls. Yeah. Rolls. Can we talk about that? Nothing the makes now? sense. Nothing I feel like we're sense. in a fever dream. Okay. As soon as they get home. First of all, this movie. I have I've been having this argument since watching this movie, being like these two should have been able to swim out the fucking window of that car once it hit the water. Yes. Oh, come on. How shallow was that? And also, nobody else heard. Nobody was in town. Like, you definitely heard that car. It's, that was it. First of all, that dog, mischievous dog. I feel devil. like that was Beetlejuice. That dog was a... St- Whoa. Could have been. Or Could've. Satan. We're seeing. Yeah. But they should have been able to. Cl- they should have been able to swim out that fucking car. Swim out. Come on. There's no way that dog was holding on to the leverage of that car. No, and it's Alec Baldwin's fault. Gina Davis is driving. She could have hit the brake. Alec Baldwin pulls the steering wheel, and yeah. the car crashes through the bridge. Nice going, Alec Baldwin. Yes, blame him. Once but again, when it fell, when the car fell, I was yeah. like, did they hit their heads? Like, why? Uh, did they did, not have seatbelts on? But still, they sh- even if they even if they should have been able to swim, unless they can't swim, then the car didn't sink. It was <laughs> it's probably like the- still there. <laughs> okay, that <laughs> movie's yeah, over. Yeah, that's not like they fell movie's off over. the Brooklyn Bridge, right? Yeah, they yeah. fell off of a bridge that you would find in like sleepy hollow where the headless horseman is throwing a pumpkin at you. And yes. that is the bridge. Yeah. Like oh, it maybe God. tops four, four foot deep. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Gina Davis is, it wasn't six. like it was raining. No, it was a perfect day. They were listening to Calypso music and like Harry Bell, Harry Bell. Oh my God. What is that too? They love the Calypso, oh, what is but that? without that, you couldn't have a class, the classic scene. Of, there that's, you. that's right. That's right. It's there you. When that came on, I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah. The Lord come and me want to go home. That was a great scene. Amazing. And I, the only reason why I know that song was because of this movie. If that happened to us, though, I, I would have shit my pants and ran. Yeah. These idiots are like, that was great. Was yeah. Like- they were having a ball. Catherine a ball. Lara. Oh, my Catherine God. Lara is awesome. Greatest. She's so funny. What is it, What does she ever play that you don't like? Yeah, I don't know. She's fantastic. She's fantastic in everything. And I, so they die. Yes. They go back to the house. No idea that they die. They're wet and then they're not wet. And then they're trying to figure out that what's happened to them. Yes. This is where the movie becomes frustrating beyond belief because as an adult, I'm seeing them make so many mistakes and I'm like, all they had to do was sit in the attic and read that fucking book. That's if they it. just read that goddamn book, they would have been fine. Life's over. But yeah. This is a movie about a man who doesn't want to read and a woman who I believe is functionally illiterate. Okay? <laughs> because, like, why didn't she read the book? It's- yeah, and why is she always waiting on him on this one? I don't know. It was so weird. I was like, just pick up the book. Read the book. No, they don't read the book. Instead, they just leave the book. The book is taken. It's it's a whole, it's a movie about people who don't like to read. This is such a reflection of America. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I love that that take on it. Oh my God. All right. So now we get 
they're, they're finally realizing they're dead. <laughs> Which is they crazy. figure out how to get to the other side or like to their, I guess their, their counselor, their, their social, agent, so- their, their social worker. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I just, I'm just like, the funny thing about Beetlejuice is did he, why did he show up there? I don't know. There's so many questions, but it's 90 minutes and they're just like, we don't care. We're going to get through this. Yes. Who who came up with this story? So the screenwriters, Michael McDowell and, and Warren Scarron, they are the screen. They wrote the screenplay It's directed by Tim Burton and story by Michael McDowell, McDowell and Larry Wilson. So this is even this isn't even written by Tim Burton, but it's super Tim Burton. Yes. I mean, the, the scenery is, is phenomenal. Oh. When, I love when they go into the underworld. Yeah, it, it's like perfectly Tim Burton. Yeah. And the um, guy, the guy who's like on fire and he's like cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The dry humor in this is great. The yeah. fact that they make fun of these like bourgeois artists from where are they from? New York. Yeah. Yeah. And what you would call it? how crazy the scenery is when they redo the house. Oh my God. Yeah. That, that, that the, the house is so scary. Like the, the walls are like that weird gray. Like it looks like concrete. Everything looks gross and the sculptures are creepy. Everything looks like it, it looks like he was making a nightmare before Christmas before a nightmare yes. before Christmas. Remember when the sculptures moved? Yeah. Go get them. I was like, oh, that reminded me of nightmare before Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. It's like absolutely. His whole, he was all in this. I loved the the costumes. I loved the underworld more than the, the real world because they got to do so many cool things with all the different characters. Like yeah. the guy who has the shark on his leg, the woman who's chopped up, Miss Argentina. <laughs> Just like even when they try to scare and they yeah. they like stretch his face and stuff like that, <laughs> all of it was so fun. It was a yeah. good time. Yeah, yeah. I love when they're like when their social workers say, We tried to get them out. Like, yeah, we heard you pulled your face off. Yeah. <laughs> I love that they're just like making fun of them. But so the whole thing was that they needed to live there for 125 years or something like that. Which right? is so random. It's just like, yeah. how do you even come up with that? But why? Couldn't why couldn't they just go right to heaven or something? I don't know. It was really weird because I was like, it was. I was trying to figure that out, but at the same time, because the movie is so is so truncated into ninety minutes, they're just like, we're not dealing with this, and it doesn't matter anymore. This is the point. The point is, these people want these people out of the house. We have this weirdo. We have a ghost. We have a bunch of other stuff, and then it's over. And we have some special effects that we need to deal with and we need to make this happen. So let's do it. And so I love that, like, it just pushes forward. And because you're right, the beginning is just like, I don't care. And finally, they are dead. And I'm like, now we're going to get to the good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And of course, you have like Lydia, who's like the goth of the, like, you know, hates everything. I mean, she she would rather be dead dead and part of being like a ghost than alive yeah. she doesn't feel like she's seen and she obviously is she gets to see see the unseen That's so, right. which is interesting yeah but i love that uh them wa- always wanting a, a daughter i guess or a kid yeah they almost like, take her on and was like no no you need to like enjoy life and stuff like that so it's it yeah. definitely interesting thing going on Oh, absolutely. And she she was great. Why not a writer was great. I mean I I mean everything she did in the film was funny, was hilarious, was weird. You know, it just was perfect. And this was really, I mean, her era. I mean, it's funny, like I'm looking at her IMDB and it's just like Beetlejuice was the third thing she was ever in. No. So it's Lucas, Square Dance, Beetlejuice. And then 1969, then Heathers, which a great movie. Great Balls of Fire, creepy. <laughs> and then Edward Scissorhands in 1990. And then Mermaids Fantastic. right after that. 
I mean, yeah, Bram Stoker's Dracula in 92. I mean, she really, Reality Bites in 1994. She killed it in this one. I loved it. I, she was so young in it. And that's why I also love that she was in Str- Stranger Things. Like they did, so, they did so good job to cast her on there. I love the scenes. My favorite scenes with Beetlejuice are the scenes in the in the model. Because they did such a great job of bringing the model to life. Like yeah. even the layers of the model when they're digging up Beetlejuice. Oh, wow, how yeah. it's like the foam and stuff like that. They did yeah. Whoever imagined it did such a great job. Amazing. The, the Amazing. set design was just fun. It was phenomenal. It took you everywhere. Absolutely. I'm going through it now and I'm going, wow. For obviously the PG horror comedy. What are they calling this thing? Yeah. PG comedy horror. Yeah. That's PG. it. PG. Yeah. Isn't that weird? And it was made for 15 million and made 84.5 million in 1988. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, there's not many scary parts to it. It's perfectly. It's not scary. It's not scary. Mm-hmm. No. It, and obviously it was for kids. Like they marketed this perfectly. Because like for kids, you would enjoy it. It was a little bit, maybe it was a little silly and funny. Yeah. And the costumes wise, like, oh, we could sell every costume here. Is Beetlejuice supposed to be like a, a zombie? So, yeah, that's what I've been always trying to figure out, whether he's a zombie or a ghost. They call him a ghost. And everyone's a ghost, but it's it's so unlike movies that I've seen with ghosts, right? Beetlejuice is like a person that's walking around. He's like more like a demon. Yeah. And apparently... And what's with the snake yeah. outside their house? What is oh, that? The sandworms? One? Yeah. That's part of the whole thing. They can't leave their house. It's they're stuck in that house for 125 years. And if they leave, they get killed by Sam. Oh, why? I, there's no explanation. I, I don't know. See, that's the thing. There's no explanation, but they don't care. They're gonna bombard you with what apparently is Michael Keaton ad libbed lines. Like, I mean, like they're just like every time the movie is asking us, every time you want an explanation from the movie, I feel like Beetlejuice is introduced into the scene and is, oh shit, this is hilarious. Yeah, dude, Michael Keaton was on point. I, I gotta say about on Michael fire. Keaton. I, I actually really like him. I don't, he's not really, he's not a great, oh my God, superstar, but yet he, he's been in some iconic films. Even oh, as yeah. Batman, bro. Perfect. People so at first weird. were probably freaking out that it is not a Batman. He, I loved him in Batman. That Batman era yeah. was great. I think it was weird because I was talking about this yesterday that when I think of Batman now or I think of superhero movies now, you have to be like, in a weird, in an insane shape. I mean, like Robert Downey Jr., I mean, he's Iron Man, so it's a little different because he's, but he's still in shape and he still looks a certain way. Absolutely. Right? Michael cut. Keaton. It, everyday man. Everyday it was like the, the It was like during the Bruce Willis era. Yes. Like the, you know, that era of like dudes who were action stars, but they were like regular people. Michael Keaton has been in some great comedies. Like when he oh, plays yeah. that factory worker who makes cars. I forget what that, oh. that one was awesome. And then he was he in Sneakers? Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Mr. Yeah. Mom. He's recently in the Spider Man verse. Oh, because he's a villain of some sort, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he he's just like his timing is great. And he's perfect at mm-hmm. being perfect. He is one of those actors that I feel like you can constantly rely on bringing it in every film because batman again <laughs> what how they cast michael keaton in batman still makes me wonder like who else was up for that role and why they cast michael keaton because it's tim burton but he did yeah it may be because it's tim burton i mean dude tim burton's mind is wild and he's we're just gonna do this we're gonna flip the script and we're gonna put these people together because i love working with them i have a great time with them and we're gonna make it work because I mean, God, I mean, you're right. I mean, I was thinking about today, if they did a prequel instead to Beetlejuice to kind of get the whole story of Beetlejuice, Mm -hmm. who are you going to cast as Beetlejuice? Like the only person, I guess, I don't know. And I don't even want to say it. 
But it'd probably oh. have to be someone like Timothy Chalamet because didn't he work with Tim Burton already? Yes. So he works so. with people he's worked with before. Yeah. So it's probably going to be that. But so I don't think there's like a review on this is nice fucking model. It was like, this is by far Michael's Michael Keane's best performance. Every time he comes on the screen, he displays such the energetic performance that rivals Jim Carrey's the mask. Oh, true. So only true. without the help of computers. This is all practical. done without. Yeah. Isn't and you that know, crazy? we mean you love practical. Yeah. I Phenomenal. Mean- I love when Alec Baldwin asks him, so what are your qualifications? I'm looking at the quote right now. He's like, oh, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague and had a pretty good time during that. I've had the, I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it, not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. <laughs> Dude, if he yeah, ad-libbed what? that, is crazy. But it's he crazy. screamed like that in Batman. Remember when like he yes. broke that thing during that thing? He's like, come on. And I was just like, I thought of Beetlejuice because I saw Beetlejuice first before I saw Batman. So yeah. when I saw that as a kid, I was like, oh, shit, that's Beetlejuice. Dude, I mean, it was it's such there's so many iconic scenes. There's so many iconic. I love Beetlejuice when at the end, like when he goes to that carnival thing, oh, the, yeah. the practical effects alone just at the end. Of yeah. what, what they had to do was it, it was just great and the story was fun yeah you know robert goulet is in it <laughs> it's nuts the boss and robert goulet is in the movie hey a robert goulet <laughs> it's like a few lines and it doesn't he's matter. the boss right yeah 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 oh my god beetlejuice the scene where he's touching the woman's legs and she's on the other side amazing the amazing. shrimp scene all uh, of it. What can we like, say? I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, so, it's all dumb, right? It's silly. What they all had to do is read the books. Maybe they would have just been been in a haunted house for the rest of for 125 years. So what? You live but with now, these people. Now they're just like living with them, right? Yeah. And it would have been all. I don't even care. It ends great. <laughs> Only thing is, is where's Beetlejuice? Well, how does Beetle- he even come back? He well, got that's eaten what I'm, by the snake. That's what I'm trying to figure out. If you get eaten by sandworm, is it just that you go, you're go, you dead a second time? Yeah. It seems right? like that's the deal. So it's not like they got rid of him. He's still around. But where? I guess that's the way to what the second one, which is, okay. I didn't want to bring it up on this episode, but we're obviously doing Beetlejuice because, well, it's Halloween's coming. And there's Beetlejuice. the new Beetlejuice. Yeah. A sequel. Yeah. With Michael Keaton. Yeah. As Beetlejuice. I got to yeah. tell you, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm afraid. And the, the woman who plays the new Wednesdays in it. So she's taking the role of all the horror genre that we grew up on. Right. Yeah. She does great as Wednesday. By the way. I think I, I actually enjoyed the show, but I'm a little worried. Yeah. And you know, if you listen to the show, we don't like remakes. We don't like reboots. But this was bound to happen because we're now in the that realm, right? They're, they're doing so many things that are coming up that you're like, what? They're redoing that. They're doing the Goonies. They're doing this. They're doing that. Oh, God. Okay, so Beetlejuice is out. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is out. So does that mean they're going to do a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? They have to. I right? Know, now I, you I, have, have to. to. Now you Cause... have to. If you didn't, then what are you doing the second one for? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think they should have never done a sequel. No. This movie dead. is perfect. This it's movie's good. perfect. It's it's every character, every actor is giving it. I mean, Jane, the real estate agent. Yeah. I mean, the, the, her part is so little, but she's giving everything to it, and she's hilarious. She's Amazing. the annoying real estate agent. She's so like, annoying. She just wants them to get the hell out of that house because she sees how much. Like, yeah. why are you trying to get them to sell this house? She's like, basically they trying live to there. Ev- yeah, she's trying to evict them. She's just get out. Yeah, I have to say something just because I remember this part. Remember, there's a scene when they're in the bed and she's floating. That's so subtle. Oh yeah, 
I never and she noticed. She gets startled, that. and the jo- I didn't notice until this. I didn't remember it. Yeah, until watching it again. And you're like, you know, they're like, can you scare people? And he does the snakes. You don't see it, which is yeah. perfectly done because it is practical. Yeah. They were like, how do we show this yeah. and not scare people? There's a lot. This is a comedy. Yeah, at heart, it's comedy. It's not. Yeah. It's not a horror film at all. No, it's not. Love it the mean- soundtrack. Oh. The soundtrack is so Tim Burton. Danny Elfman is just ridiculous. I mean, stop, Danny. I mean, the crazy. score is phenomenal. Yeah, it's he crazy. Can't. Is he doing the second one? Let me see. I have the second one up, and I'm looking music by Danny Elfman. Okay. Yeah, but it's I might also, have to watch this, Dan. Manny, I just want to warn you. It is 104 minutes long. 104? Yeah. 104 minutes. There's an extra 10 minutes. An extra, an extra like, right. 12 minutes. Maybe because they need to introduce everybody so it's a little longer in the beginning. I mean, like, it's made a lot of money so far. Has it? What has it's, it got? It's got a... Right now, two, it's got a 7.1 rating. Oh, oh man. We're going to have to watch this, aren't we? We are. It's going to be a Nostalgia Now. It is. It's going to be a Nostalgia Now episode. You know it is. What do you feel like it's going to be? You think it's going to be good? What do you think? Is it going to be better than the first one? No. I mean, Absolutely he, has, he can't be better than the first one. because, And I'm not trying to be that person that's, oh, a band was never as good as their first album, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's not what we're doing here. Beetlejuice 1, and I hate saying that it is a Beetlejuice 1, but like the first Beetlejuice, when I sat and watched it, I was mesmerized by the whole experience again all of it and i'm yeah. just trying to think and this happened in an episode that i don't know if it's got to Catherine heigl and we know your writer and are in this Catherine heigl no Catherine o'hara not Catherine o'hara the Catherine o'hara are, are, are in <laughs> i was like Catherine Catherine heigl. Heigl. <laughs> Catherine heigl is gonna come back with the 28 dresses yeah who is she <laughs> beetlejuice <laughs> Oh, huh? oh my god, is she Beetlejuice? <laughs> but everything that was going on in this film was And it's PG so thirteen, Dan, because the ratings have changed. Well, that's right. But I feel like this one's probably more offensive than that one. And it's not an offensive movie, but I mean Beetlejuice was like sexually harassing everyone. I mean, I've seen there were Yeah, I mean they put a whole like girls and, thing. Yeah, I yeah. mean he was looking up. Can I watch the preview while we're sitting here? I'm can we make like, this a preview episode as well? Can you want? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, let's do that. All right, because I haven't it. seen the preview. Believe it or not. <laughs> will Alec Baldwin show up? Okay, so here's the thing about that, and I will say this: they're dead, right? They're in. They're in heaven. Well, been one five years. No, it hasn't. The pro no it hasn't been a hundred years. Right, they're supposed to stay there for 125 yeah. years. So why aren't they there? Alec Baldwin hates his performance in Beetlejuice One. It wasn't he hates great. it. Well, because he's not funny. Yeah, and so he doesn't. I guess want to be. He wouldn't have been wanted to be part of it. Even and if what about Gina Davis? It. And I guess you can't have Gina Davis without Alec Baldwin because again, she can't read. <laughs> But it'd be it's interesting that they're not gonna say like they're they're supposed to live in that house for 125 years, so they should be yeah. in that house even if the others leave. Of course, yeah. But this maybe it, dude, there's a surprise. First of all, I'm gonna say this: okay. Michael Keaton. We just watched the trailer for Beetlejuice. Yes. Beetlejuice. Even though it's been out, we're gonna try and watch this. I'm scared. The thing is, <sighs> so after watching the trailer, I'll tell you this: I'm not. Uh, they're obviously going for the nostalgic strings. Sort of. They put in the sculpture. They have the, you know, like yeah. the, you know, now he's behind the, the curtain. Like he's in the desk. This is what I'm going to tell you. You have to know this part. Now he was in about 14 and a half to 17 minutes of the original Beetlejuice. And that was a 92 minute movie. Michael okay. Keaton is only going to be in this movie for the same amount of time 
No. And it's going to be 104 minutes. No. Now I, well, yes. I own Beetlejuice 1 on DVD. That's right. Everyone, if you're listening to this 50 years in the future, DVDs used to be this thing that movies would come on and you'd put it in this other thing that would play it on your TV. And they used to come with special features. And one of the special features in the version that I have is the theatrical trailer to the original Beetlejuice. And it is just like this trailer where Beetlejuice is in the majority of the trailer, yet in what? 20% of the movie. Okay. So we saw this trailer. He's in almost every scene of this trailer. Yes. He's going to be in the movies for the same amount of time, apparently. I think it's going to be the woman with the that's looking for Beetlejuice. Monica Bellucci. Monica, yeah, Bellucci. Yeah. And Willem Dafoe. She's, and she's going to be a major part of this. The problem I find with this movie is the graphics, the CGI is so pre- prevalent. Apparent, yeah. But that's the problem we have now. It's cheaper to do that, right? If you go on practical effects, it's going to be more money. But when I see Tim Burton, I expect practical effects. Yes. You know, and I expect Danny DeVito's in this movie. Oh, my God, dude. See, here's the other thing. Now they're just going to pack it full of people. Dude, Danny DeVito's the janitor. The guy that was in the first one, like that janitor. He's yeah, that's the lost soul. William Defoe is in this movie. (laughs) That's the lost souls room. That's the lost souls who been exorcist. But see, but that's Uh, the thing about Beetlejuice one. It was still it wasn't scary. It was creepy and unnerving at times. Even when they came back home and they saw that their house had been changed, they were gone for three months and and all these things. But this one seems very shiny and it's doing that thing. I feel like that action movies do action movies in the eighties and nineties were actiony and they were action films. Okay. Now everything is like action with comedy because we have to, everything has to be ironic or funny or everyone has to be a wise ass. This movie seems like it's kind of bordering on that where it's just one. We're going to pack it full of fucking cameos. Why does Danny DeVito even need to be in this movie? Why are you mad that he's in? I'm mad. I'm not mad. I'm just questioning. Are they padding the movie with cameos? Brad Pitt is an executive producer. Okay. See, are they padding the movie (laughs) with cameos and other actors because the storyline is trash? Could be. I mean, it's a sequel. What? There's only a handful of sequels that are better than the first. Empire Strikes Back was great. T2. T two, T two. It shouldn't have been a T one. Yes, that's. There is no Why am I watching a dude? I'm watching a human being run from a fucking Terminator the entire. Yeah, time. yeah. Love T two. T two is phenomenal. Temple of great. Doom. Ah, uh, Temple of Doom wasn't better than Indiana Jones one, but it wasn't a bad movie. Yeah. So, what are your my... thoughts on Batman Returns? <sighs> Not we have great. to do we might but have I didn't to do hate that. it. See, we I don't know. Like a lot of people like kind of hate it. I didn't hate it. I just no. thought it was um a little long. That was a long movie. It was long. See, this movie, I'm trying to figure like why bring him back? okay. Why the juice is, is the... loose is kind of a stupid lie. It's horrible. Because that's isn't that like what is that? The juice is loose. Isn't that like a OJ like? I term? was just gonna say. Yeah. Why are they doing that? I don't know. <laughs> I just want to think like, you have the model in Beetlejuice one. Obviously, it's there because Alec Baldwin built it, because he has so much time on his hands. Because no one's coming to his hardware store, and he's mm-hmm. got that lunatic barber shop next door with no windows. It's like just a door, and like that guy just talking to himself. I don't know who goes to the hardware store, how they have a living, how they have a house. I feel like they have the biggest house in all wherever they live, right? Yeah. I feel like at some point, the killer clowns from outer space are going to come and yes, kill everyone. Yes, this is the there. town that they live in. Yes. Right. But in Beetlejuice hill, 2... you got to drive around all the time. Right. In yeah. Beetlejuice 2... Oh, wait. This is what I wanted to say about the beginning. I'm sorry, everyone. This is the way the podcast goes. And and if you're listening now, share this with a friend. Like this podcast right now because this is <laughs> this, they is, the, this is a this this episode went to a, a tangent that is now a trailer episode. It is a classic 
nostalgia test episode. Yeah. These two idiots could have walked from their house to the hardware store. They didn't. Yeah, have she to rode drive. a bike. She's riding a bike in the second one. Yeah. She's riding a bike, Dan. Yeah. They couldn't ride a bike. They're on vacation. They're on <laughs> They could have taken a long walk. And when I he know. got to the hardware store, all that shit was right on the counter ready for him. Why couldn't okay. they get the person to deliver it to them? The barbershop guy? Nobody else was in the hardware store? No, it was oh, closed. He, 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 it's his, so it was closed. They're on so vacation. He, yeah. Yeah, they're on vacation. What? He didn't have to go get the damn thing. I just want to know what they're on vacation from. Telling you they want to have a baby. Well, they need to get moving. They're on a staycation, Dan. Let's call it a staycation. They were like Amish. And why? Yeah. And who plays music on an on a tape recorder that <laughs> that looks they like an answering Amish. machine? <laughs> You're right. They were Amish. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! But back to ba- Beetlejuice too, like that trailer. I'm looking at it and I'm just like, why is the model still in a goddamn attic? Why didn't they just get rid of it? I'm watching the second one, and like all the little guys' heads are everywhere. The why guy, are they? Yeah. Why are they there? I don't know. I I get it. It was a fun aspect, but why? Why are there so many of them? You tell me. The blue guy can. just comes and shrinks their head. And shrinks everybody's heads. Yeah, that one head shrinker at the big at the end is like shrinking everyone's heads. Yeah, I don't. Know. I'm, I'm not worried. sure. I'm gonna We're watch gonna wa- the second I'm, one. I'm gonna watch it. We're gonna have to watch. I'm it. gonna watch it. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm gonna watch yeah. it within two weeks, and we're gonna do the episode. All so right, back to Beetlejuice. Back one. to actual Beetlejuice one. <laughs> when you're thinking of Beetlejuice, what is the scene that you feel like truly defines that movie for you? The scene where. It truly defines that movie. It's the car. It's the end scene when he mm. turns into a carnival and turns it like it's chaotic. It's crazy. Yeah. And he like he plays like so many different characters in that mm. one moment. Mm. That's that scene. Yeah. And but I obviously I got to take that back. I'm just, shut shut up, Manny. Shut <laughs> up. It's the it's the sing along song. It's the yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There yeah. Yo. It's the greatest scene it's ever. A, it's, it's the scene is great. Yeah, it's such a good scene. It's such a good scene, and it comes out of nowhere, and it's just like unbelievable, and it's so fun. And yet, and and even with the the shrimp part and everything, I loved it. It was that is the best part of Beetlejuice. And you know what's funny? The whole movie until the end, the scene that you said prior to the scene you like we just talked about. Beetle just isn't in the quintessential striped suit until the end. Yeah. He's never in it. He shows no. up in like a taxi driver uniform. Yeah. And then he's in which, all these yeah, other things. You only know him about in the in the in the striped. That's right. Which is just very interesting. But or the or the the wedding when you like he's in the at the end, he's in like yeah. um yeah. Oh my the, god, this scene's so good. The the scene with the Deo scene is, I think it's such a good scene because every actor in that scene goes 100%. 100. Yeah. Every single actor, even even the ones that are just like the side actors. That woman smoking, I thought she was going to pass out. Perfect. She's perfect. I know. It's perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Dan. What else yeah. we got to say about this? What else do we have to say about Beetlejuice? You know what? It was a quick movie. It's yes. just going to be a quick review. I think the the main thing about Beetlejuice that everyone has to remember is that, and this is the lesson we can all learn as people, and this is the lesson that I take away, and then there's one more character we have to talk about because okay. if you can't not talk about this one character and if we're you. talking about Beetlejuice, if you die or something happens to you and a book shows up out of nowhere that is a book about what just happened to you take the time to read that book because you have, all the it, time in the world. you have all the time in the world they're dead there's nowhere to go pick up the book and read it nobody okay? can see you they can no. walk by you while you're reading oh, the damn thing manny why would they out the window why did they jump out the window no one could see them they jumped out the window i know why read your books people everyone needs read to them. read books that's, That's the where main the lesson thing. is, Dan. The great read lesson is read a book. Yes. Read a book. Okay. Read the directions. You read the directions. Okay. 
<laughs> That's right. Read the directions. Excellent. Now, before right. we even before anything, we have to talk about that Do character we? Olaf, right? Otho, off Otho, Otho. Yes. The designer. Dude, this guy. You want to hate him. He is. We kind of hate him. Absolutely. But, but perfectly played. The greatest. <laughs> he, he steals is, the damn book. He steals the book, but he steals the book in a way where it's like everyone should have seen that shit coming. Yep. Bro, he causes most of the problem in these in this whole he thing. Does. There could have been a very nice relationship between the ghosts yeah. and the family for Absolutely. 125 years. Okay. Absolutely. He comes in, makes what's her name? redo the whole fucking house oh my god okay yeah. is is he the one that's married to her what's going on here i love that scene when Catherine o'hara says she goes if you don't let me gut this house and do what i want i will take out oh god sir i will go insane and take care of my time oh my god but this guy is a terrorist in this movie and he almost kills people who already died and he doesn't know how to re reverse it that was horrible again another guy who didn't read what's going on he goes i don't know wait because you, you didn't read the book yeah you didn't You're read killing, you didn't read the damn book why because you wanted to, to bring them up like why there you know they exist <laughs> he was just looking at they, were, were they trying to make mo uh, money out of this they is were trying to make doing? money and first yeah. of all, he wanted Robert Goulet to buy the whole town and turn it into an amusement park. What <laughs> is wrong with him? Oh, my God. The, first of all, the actor we're talking about who is like uh, amazing, Glenn Shaddix, who unfortunately did pass away in 2010. But he also played the same character in the movie Sleepwalkers. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, Manny. With the, no. the It's a weird Stephen King movie where cats are like the main villains okay <laughs> he was also in demolition man which we need to do and in nightmare before christmas oh, he, he was, the was voice. in demolition man he plays the same, the same character guy. Wait, he's a like a pompous asshole that's like, right Bushy. they're yes they're at the taco bell yes they're at the he, taco bell and the woman next he's to all him, dressed in gold and stuff the woman next to him is basically playing the same character that was with at the other table. And he's the best scene is when he she says, What if I said you were a barbarian from an obsolete time period? And he <laughs> Stallone's just sitting there looking at looking at her like, fuck you. Yeah. And then they said to him, Are you saying you had you could hear people while you're in cryo prison? And they're like, impossible. He's like, No, it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that movie. You don't know what that movie's through. amazing. Demolition Man. Love it. Manny. All but right. he played the same character in Sleepwalkers and in Demolition Man and in Beetlejuice. Uh, great actor. He was also the voice of the mayor in Nightmare Before Christmas. He's also in a lot of other things. He played voices in a lot. The Batman. Um, which we call it? Teen Titans, he was in. Wow, this guy got it. You know, he was he was in a lot of things. All right, we're here. So, so just yes. okay. No, just, he was also just in, just oh. in, Ju what? just in. <laughs> Someone's in. Just in from our secret producer. Apparently, that at the end when Beetlejuice is the carousel, at the very top of the carousel is Jack Skellington. No. Yep. <laughs> um, now, we're like, yeah. now we're now these podcasters are taking the time to look this up. Oh, the oh, image oh. of the Beetlejuice. I just saw that image. Oh, it's blocked off. You bitch. It's blocked off. Now I'm gonna have to look up. Who how how did she find that out? I'm gonna look it up right now and see if it's oh shit. Okay, Manny, here we go. Ready? It was on the image is on Reddit, and I'm gonna share my screen right now and show you. Here we go. Ready? Hold on. Where's my? Oh my god! It raises up that way. You see it? Yes. Yep. Wow. Hold on. There we go. Tim Burton. <laughs> Look at that. 
Look Always. at that, everyone. Look at that. Blowing Holy shit. Yeah. And even the guy. 88 that was yeah. there. And even the guy who marries them, he looks like a character from one of. They, I think they, all these eight. people, all these people are from. Maybe the world that they go to is the world, is the Halloween town. Could be. You know? Till we meet again. Unbelievable. Dude, that's unbelievable. That's, that's, that's great. Tim quite Burton, the Easter putting egg. in some Easter Holy eggs. Holy shit. Thank you, secret producer. Thank you, secret producer. <laughs> that is quite the Easter egg. Well, Manny. All right. We this is definitely a tangent filled episode on Beetlejuice. We also watched the second trailer of Beetlejuice, and um, we have very we have a lot of reservations about it. Um, and but we're gonna and watch fe- it and fears. We're gonna go and we're gonna review it for you guys. But Manny, here Argentina. comes the big question of the Nostalgia Test podcast: As you're frozen, does the does be does Beetlejuice from 1988 rated PG? With one fuck in it, pass the nostalgia test. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it does. I was, li- I was kind of, I'm going to be honest, I had it in the background. I was kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know, I was doing a couple other things I needed to do. And I was like, kind of, eh, you know, this is okay. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. And then I got to like really think about it. It's a, it's such a good movie. Yeah. Just like the way it's shot. They don't make films like this anymore. Mm-hmm. Just the, it's beautifully shot, beautifully lit. Thought thought about every single scene is thought about. You're transformed in every single plot twist of this movie. Mm-hmm. Changes the way you even think about art in this movie. So love it. Now, what do you think? I'm going to say that a hundred percent this this movie passes the nostalgia test. There is nothing that this there there's no way that this movie doesn't pass the nostalgia test. It's perfect. And the yeah. thing is that I would say that because you have an idea that's so original that is just unbelievably hilarious and weird and fun i'm craving that like i'm craving that originality in my movies and shows and everything right now right i need that but we're getting legacy sequel after legacy sequel after legacy sequel after fucking a24 fucking horror film so all we have is Horror films that are going to traumatize you and legacy sequels at this point that are getting the most play. I will say that we should be happy about that because it gives us more content. It gives us more content. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. We should be okay <laughs> with this, right? Because we're, you know, but I, I'm going to say something. So Beetlejuice comes back when you say Beetlejuice three times. Yeah. But they already know all you have to do is say Beetlejuice three times again and he goes back into his place. Right. So why is this even a movie? No wonder he's only going to be here for four times. Well, he can't. He can't. He's never letting people say his name three times again. Remember, he like zipped oh, yeah, up he puts a zip up, and That's why yeah. they're showing that it happens again. That's Remember right. Remember the guy that was run over and he was flattened? Even he shows up. Oh, my God. That guy's hilarious. <sighs> hilarious. The football team. And the football team. They show up <laughs> at the end, too, when she's singing and floating in the air. Yes, a very iconic scene where, like, right at the end, before the, before we end this episode, the last scene of Lydia being raised by ghosts now, and her other parents just, I guess, redecorating the house back like to the original house. I feel like they're just doing house. whatever. Yeah, and I feel like they're just kind of like letting the other ones parent Lydia. Yeah, because they don't really like their kid, and plus that's her stepdaughter anyway. So like, they don't really like each other. No. So I feel like it's just. I actually hope that one of them makes it an appearance. They better talk about why they're not at the house. I don't know. I guess we'll hear about whether or not Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin's characters die and go to the like lost souls. They actually get door. to the, or they like make it. I don't know. All right, listen, guys. <laughs> I don't know. All right, <laughs> everyone, let's go see it. We're gonna see. It. I yes. hope you guys. Go see it as well, and then yeah. we're all going to review it together. That's right. Don't and forget then, to follow us at the Nostalgia Test. Leave a review, leave a comment, share because Dan and I 
want to continue to do this and actually, you know, maybe pay a bill or two. So we appreciate you guys. Steve reaching out to you saying, hi, hope you're still listening. Hope you're still watching. I know you don't have Instagram anymore. So you just have to go and read our newsletter. So if you don't have Instagram, sign up for our newsletter. Yes. I don't know how you found us, but continue to find us at whatever podcast where you go for your podcasts. Yeah. And if you're like, if you're out there and you have an idea for our show, you can go right to our website, the com, and you can suggest a test. There's a tab at the front at the top of our website where you could do that. And it's where you can also join the newsletter. And also if you're out there and you're an author on pop culture or a pop culture scholar or a professional in the field, and you want to come and mix it up with us and tell us all about what you love, what you've been writing about and what you do, hit us up at the nostalgia test at gmail.com. And let's get you on. We would love to learn from you from Nostalgia 101 and everyone. Have, I don't know what I'm saying. Everyone, I'll see you at the next test. Share the episode. That's awesome because I, well, I want to say that I, my screen paused out on you and like you said that whole thing and then this is how it ended. You said the whole thing and you're like, I don't know what I'm saying. Just say the episode. <laughs> I didn't hear anything you said. So I can't wait to listen to this again just to hear what you said. Oh my God. Everyone, peace. Peace. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please subscribe to the Nostalgia Test podcast to know when new episodes drop. Don't forget to leave us five stars and a positive review so more people can find the podcast. Share your thoughts and memories on today's topic on our Twitter, at Nostalgia Test, and on Instagram, at The Nostalgia Test. Tune in next time because you never know what pop culture will pop up on The Nostalgia Test.